Chemical reactions are happening all around us, 24 hours a day. Some are natural processes. Some are man-made. And chemical reactions drive all of the life processes in our own bodies. Many of these processes belong to a particular class of chemical reactions, known as redox reactions. We have a go for engine start. Three, two, one. They're important, and in this and following programs, we'll see how redox reactions affect our lives, why many are useful, and why some create big problems. The first question, of course, is, what is a redox reaction? Aluminium is a light, strong metal that we use in countless ways. Where does it come from? There are huge deposits of aluminium around the world. But when you dig it up, it's not shiny lumps of aluminium, it's in the form of aluminium oxide, an ionic compound known as alumina. Once it's been refined to remove impurities, the question is how to separate the aluminium from the oxygen. The answer is smelting, and the process is essentially a chemical reaction driven by serious amounts of electrical energy. The oxide is heated to 1200 degrees Celsius in huge baths. Once it dissolves, its ions are free to move around. The baths also contain large blocks of carbon in the form of graphite. When electric charge is applied, molten aluminium metal forms. It's tapped off and cast into solid blocks. Meanwhile, the carbon blocks are progressively eaten away, so they need to be regularly replaced. Finally, as well as converting aluminium ions into metallic aluminium, the process produces large amounts of carbon dioxide. So, we start with aluminium ions, oxide ions and elemental carbon. We finish up with metallic aluminium and carbon dioxide. We can observe this, but what's the underlying chemistry? Let's look at the change to aluminium. Three plus ions were converted to neutral atoms. For this to happen, each ion must gain three electrons. And if they gained electrons, something must have given them up. In other words, a reaction occurred in which electrons were transferred from one substance to another. So we know this must be a redox reaction. When you light a gas jet on a cooktop, you start a chemical reaction. Methane, CH4, releases energy as it combines with oxygen to form water and carbon dioxide. But is this a redox reaction? Let's write the equation for the substances involved. At this stage, we're not concerned with balancing the equation. We want to know whether electrons are being transferred. Problem is, all the materials, reactants and products, are neutral molecules. So there isn't any obvious way of seeing if electrons are transferred, where they came from or where they went. Let's see what oxidation numbers can tell us. For methane, the overall oxidation number is zero. Since there are four hydrogen atoms and their number is plus one, the oxidation number for carbon here must be minus four. Oxygen is a neutral molecule, so its oxidation number is zero. Now the products. By the rules, the oxygen in water is minus two and hydrogen is plus one. And since there are two hydrogens, the number for the whole molecule is zero. No surprises there. Now, as we've already seen, the oxidation number for carbon in a carbon dioxide molecule is plus four. So here's the oxidation number scorecard. 
hydrogen's oxidation number is plus one before and after. No change. Oxygen's number has changed from zero to minus two. And carbon's oxidation number has changed from minus four to plus four. The oxidation numbers reveal that oxygen has gained electrons and carbon has lost electrons. They tell us that as methane burns, electrons are transferred from carbon to oxygen. So yes, this is a redox reaction. <laughs>